How's it going everybody? Welcome to the channel. This is Big Daddy Dave and this is a map tour for a new mod map to Farming Simulator 22 called Great Grandfather's Farm. And we're going to start with the description from the mod hub and it reads, Welcome to my Great Grandfather's Farm. This is a beautiful and not too big fictional map where you can do farming, forestry, and animal husbandry. This map is based mainly on animal husbandry and agriculture. According to, accordingly, agriculture Agricultural areas and locations were determined. There are two rivers on the map from which you can meet your water needs for your greenhouses or animals. At the beginning, you can explore the map with the owner of the farm and animal farm, as well as three agricultural lands. There are many empty areas on the map where you can add anything you want. On the map, you will find the following. 36 fields and 4 meadows, 1 BGA, various productions and sale outlets, 1 forests, additional buildings, productions available, grain mill, sawmill, and more. You can add it whatever you want, however you want. All the DLCs are fully supported. Have fun exploring the map. There are mods required for this map, starting with the Hall with Cooling Chamber by Far Fiver Farmer 5 Tom, Salvage Hall Package by Razak, Shed Pack by Barney, and VDI Large Storage Hall by Vertex Design. This map was created by AE Mapping and is 207.54 megabytes to download. If we take a look at the map, this is what it looks like. We start out here on our main farm, kind of in the middle and down to the south a little ways. We start out by owning farmlands number one and three, one being a sunflower field that is growing and another field with no product in it, and three being a wheat field that is ready to harvest and our main starting farm. Let's see, you are not able to purchase all areas of the map. As you can see, there is plenty of dead space that we are not able to purchase. You Prices do vary, but rather rather expensive holy smokes one of the smaller ones hundred and ninety eight thousand dollars for this little plot of land 313 313 uh okay the, some reason i thought they didn't click properly nine hundred and four thousand six hundred one thousand six hundred seventy four thousand you got five hundred twenty four thousand one point one million dollars one point one million dollars 640 so on and so forth you got this little chunk up here for 122 this is the smallest price that you can get is a hundred twenty two thousand dollar chunk of property and that's basically grass and trees really not a lot if we take a look at our animals we do start out with a couple of animals we have a cow barn and a sheep barn we do have contracts available to us production chains we don't start out with any of those and there are no collectibles on this map and if we take a look at the mods specific to this map, starting at the build menu, nothing here whatsoever. And if we take a look under the build menu, also nothing under any of these whatsoever. Nothing for buildings, productions, animals, decorations, or landscaping. Even painting swatches. Everything is just standard for this map. So now, because we're here at the starting equipment or starting farm, we're going to take a look at our starting equipment. Now, I'm going to warn you. You get a lot, a lot, probably one of the most I've seen for a starting build. So let's get into under the build, buy menu and own items. Check it out. Small tractors. We have a Valtra N175 Direct, a Kloss Arian 660, New Holland T6 175, and a Case Maxim CVX 145. Four small tractors. Under medium tractors, we have a Massey Ferguson 7726S, a Fent 724 Vario, a Massey Ferguson 7S210, and a Massey Ferguson 6718S for medium tractors. So eight tractors total. A harvester, John Deere T560. Trailers, the Rudolph TDK 301RA, TDK 301RP, and DK. 280RL. Header for our John Deere. We've got two plows, the Cavernland Ecomat and the Agrimaz POV5XL. Under cultivators, we have a Lemkin Carrot 12500KUA, 
the Lemkin Schmard 9500K, and the Amazon Senia, Senio 4000 Super. Disc Heroes, the Horse Joker 4 CT. Power Heroes, the K Brand 440, two of those. Cedars, we have a Pottinger Terrasim C6F and a K Brand Venta 4030. Under Planters, a Lemkin Azurit 9. Sprayers, a Hardy Navigator 4000 Delta Force. Fertilizer Spreaders, the Amazon ZGTS 10001. Newer Spreaders, the Haw DST 16. Slurry Tanks, the Sluchen. Sluten VT-130 and Spider SP-6834. Mowers, the Pottinger Novacat A-10 Crossflow and Novacat 301 AMED Pro. Forage Wagons, the Schutmacher uh, Rapide 5, uh, 580V. Baylor's, the Pottinger Impress 8, uh, 185V C Pro. I can talk, I swear. Class FL-140 Front Loader. Front loader tools, the Alba Universal Bucket. Weights, we have the Agco 2300. One, two, three, four of those. And that is it. A lot of starting equipment to start out with. And pretty heavy on the slot count, too, because of it. So you can see uh, 1,352 out of 4,400 for new gen consoles. Uh, previous gen consoles, that's going to be uh, quite a bit of, quite a bit of uh, room there to take up so yeah not uh not the greatest but i mean you get you get a lot of starting equipment it's pretty nice so we start out here on the main starting farm over here we have our main silo fuel tank over here bunch of equipment stored over there we have a solid fertilizer silo right here a bale and pallet storage right here and a liquid fertilizer uh, silo right here now what I'm gonna do before I continue on with this tour is I'm gonna cut out here and I'm going to go ahead and purchase a truck to get us around this map a little bit easier there's gonna be a bit of back and forth and, and kind of backtracking and whatnot so using a truck is gonna be a little bit quicker and easier on us so I will bring us right back as soon as I get the truck back to this location at the starting farm all right, so I'm back here at the main portion of the starting farm. I'm going to go ahead and head out and go to the secondary portion of the starting farm, which is right across the street. So we'll back out of here. Make a left. And right here to my right is the second portion of the starting farm. Here we have a cow barn, slurry output here, feed input here. We have room for 45 cows. We have our milk trigger here and our straw trigger right here. And a sheep barn right over here. Room for 65 sheep. Feed here and our output of wool here. A couple bunker silos. A manure heap right there. And a storage for liquid fertilizer right here. Oops. And now... Go ahead and turn around and take in all the stuff down here. So we come to the end of this road and we'll make a right. And here we'll make a left. Then tucked around the back side of this area here is the supermarket, the grocery mart cell point right there. We'll continue to follow this around over here. And then we'll make a right. Go across this bridge right here. Make a right. Then a left. Followed by a right.
Oh, did I? I missed it. Nope, I went down the wrong way. I forgot this little chunk of road isn't here. It doesn't show that links up. All right, there it is, right there. That is the uh, Feed and Grain South cell point. Now backtracking a little ways, going in this direction. Following this around, going straight down to the biogas plant right here. Come around to this side over here. Just like so. You can purchase the biogas plant for $1,730,480. Solid input here and here. We have around this side. Our liquid input right here. And the liquid output, aka our di digestate is on the back side way over here. Now I will say that there is what I believe to be an issue here at the biogas plant. So we have our bunkers right here that we're supposed to be able to load our silage or sugar beets, you know, all that stuff. Load all that stuff into here. The problem is, is that normally there's a ramp or an elevation in the ground texture that allows you to get up to here with vehicles. You can't get up here. I can't even jump up here. There's this little uh, concrete slab right here. So that might need to be adjusted. So now we're going to backtrack our way out of here. Until we get back to the starting farm. Crossing the bridge one more time. And now, take this all the way to the main road. here and now we head all the way down to the next point of interest right over here that is the red marble bowling restaurant cell point from here, we need to go ahead and turn around. And pull in right here. We have the shop trigger right there. And repair trigger right here. Pull back out of here. down the road a little ways to my right this is the lime station a little buy point for lime turn here head down the road Tucked away over here is the Johnson's Farmer's Market sell point right here. Backtrack to the main road. And then 
Head in this direction. Gas station to my right. And then this big set of buildings coming up to our left. That is our next point of interest. Cross the bridge. And right here is the South Valley Biomass Energy Cell Point. Wood cell trigger right over there. Continuing in this direction. Now we're going to cut through the woods until we get to our next point of interest. Right over here. Around the back side over here. We have the animal dealer cell point right over there. And the animal dealer themselves. Now, if you have pens and pastures already placed down on the map for animals, you can go ahead and come to this location and use this icon, or you can use the icon at the pen and pasture themselves. If you use this icon, though, you will incur an additional fee. That fee is associated to a delivery fee. The animal dealer is essentially taking the animals from this location and taking them to wherever you have them on the map. Now, it gets a little bit expensive if you go this route. You can see if I go into cows for our cow barn there, it's a $100 fee per adult cow. 45 cows, if we were to buy all 45 right now, is $4,500 plus the base price for each additional cow. So you can see that tax on quite a bit of extra money just to allow the animal dealer to take them over yourself. Now you can save that money by bringing the animal trailer to this location and loading your animals directly into it. You can then deliver the animals and you're good to go from there. Now you can lease, you can own, it doesn't matter what you do. As long as you have the animal trailer and you can deliver them, you're good to go. So something to, to think about because, you know, do you want to spend the extra money, you know, especially if you're earlier on in the game? It, it all depends, especially depending on how many animals you're going to come out with. So now we follow this road. Heading directly east. And let's go ahead and stop right here. Over here we have the grain mill. $96,000 to purchase this. Output here and input right there. Go back to the truck. Actually, we'll go right over here. Right next door is the oil mill. 80,000 purchase. And you have your input and output here. Over here, you have the spinnery. 60,000 to purchase. And your input and output are on the back side, right here. Now let's go and get our truck and go to our last point of interest. So now down at the end of this road is the last point of interest. It is the sawmill. Now you can see here is the input for the sawmill with a wood cell trigger right there. But the purchase point is way back here. 100,000 to purchase, output here, and wood chip output right there. And that's it. That is everything here on Great Grandfather's Farm. Now it's time to render my opinion and let you know what I think. Zero to five scale as per usual. Oh my goodness. Where do I begin on this map? So 
I'm going to start out by saying I'm not really crazy about this map whatsoever. The color palette, I think, is borderline cartoon. There's a lot of different whites and yellows and you know, occasional pinks and, and all this stuff. And it just kind of, because there's such a thick border around most of the roads, you see a lot of that kind of color. And it really kind of bleeds through and makes it, again, just feel very cartoonish. You're getting the oranges and the whites and the yellows and all that just kind of makes it feel, I don't know, cartoony is the best way I can describe it. Um, the fields, every single one of them is very rectangular or square. There is no quote unquote difficulty with the fields whatsoever. Um, then you kind of go around and you see kind of the road network that's available and in particular around the starting farm and where things are kind of placed using said road network. So this might be me just kind of nitpicking. I'm not sure about this one, but it's one of those where I'm not crazy about the road network because you... How do I, how do I say this? You got your main starting farm here and you have a nice paved road leading to your starting farm, which all of a sudden just disappears up here and turns into a two track road. You can see, it turns in dirt road and then a two track road. And there's a massive grocery store back here on a two track road and it's a dead end road. I would know, I, I can't think of a single instance where somebody would build like this, like in real life. I cannot think of a situation where this would happen. Now, I'm not saying it doesn't happen or never has happened or anything like that, but especially maybe in a very, very small town, you just kind of, you know, build where you have it kind of thing, but off a two track road, off of a dirt road, like I, I just don't see that. And then this one, I think, is even more egregious to, to me personally. You have these massive, 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 massive uh, silo facilities out here. One of the cell points is out here. And it is absolutely behemoth huge. Look at this. This is a monster of a facility. And more than likely, you're going to have, if you're, you're kind of expanding this thought process out, you're going to have massive vehicles coming back here and kind of doing their thing. Well, those vehicles, those massive semis and all that stuff coming in and out, you know, all day, every day, they're not going to use a two track trail to get back unless they absolutely have to. And on top of that, I don't see a world in which them going across a wooden bridge is really in the cards like I said it's just one of those just seems very unrealistic like I understand this is a fictitious map and, and all that but it's just one of those where that one just really kind of screamed at me like my brain I, I'm having a very hard time like driving around this map and not falling back on wow that just doesn't seem right to me like something whoa Something about that just seems very odd and off. And it's just, you, you look around and you see a lot of these like facilities that are just tucked away off the main strip and on these two track roads. It just doesn't seem realistic. It doesn't seem possible. So it just breaks that kind of immersion factor that uh, a lot of maps can have. You know, that whole sense of I am at one with the map i am playing on the map and it doesn't even necessarily have to be a real map it just has to at least have that hint of realism and i just i don't feel that with this one and i think that's kind of the biggest hang up i have about this map is that i just don't feel like it's even in the realm of possible so it's one of those that when everything's kind of said and done I think that I'm just not a huge fan for this map 
this would be an amazing map for somebody trying to learn the game who wants to deal with maybe just a little bit of difficulties here and there especially with like the rivers and the, the narrow roadways and all that stuff that's going to be kind of a challenge for somebody just starting out but somebody who's probably an established gamer who's just starting this uh farming simulator game this would be the map to check out because they would you know have the muscle memory and the hand-eye coordination to be able to handle how to do things but somebody who's like brand new to gaming the brand new to farming simulator all that i don't think this would be a very friendly map because there are obstructions there are hazards you know as you can see this river coming right through the center of the the map here that could be a real bother to a lot of new people so all in all I, oh and, and something else i meant to mention the topography the landscape of this map it is just incredibly flat incredibly incredibly flat and me personally i'm just not a huge fan of flat maps it just seems very like very open and boring to me so it's just one of those that yeah at the end of the day i think i'd probably give this map a one and look i'm not saying any of this to be mean or to be you know anything or any particular way towards the map maker number one i'm always incredibly grateful for every single map maker out there who goes out and makes a map for farming simulator 22 because more than likely there's going to be people who think i'm crazy thinking uh, giving it a one like no way this is a 10 out of five you know kind of thing like it's there's going to be those kind of people who are going to think I'm wrong. And I don't think that I'm the arbiter of truth. I'm just stating my opinion and how I feel about this. All this is, is constructive criticism. It is me trying to to put my voice out there and say, if this happens to make it to the map maker, these are the things that I would look into as to potentially tighten things up and to make them, you know, just a little bit... Um, more friendly to my perspective and again i am not the arbiter of truth so the map maker is more than welcome to take it or leave it kind of thing it's one of those that to me to them i'm just some guy on the internet so all that said and done i hope you enjoyed this map tour if you did please show them by liking sharing subscribing following commenting doing all the things the algorithm enjoy you doing the shows you're engaged with this channel and join the content and that being said hope you have a fantastic day Take care.